What's up everybody, it's your boy Scummy Rebel here, and if you ever heard such a hot take on something that you think it's either satire or quite possibly the stupidest thing ever said, well apparently all that me playing Call of Duty World War II did was, well, it ended up turning me into a Nazi? Who are you calling a Nazi? Drank beer, liked beer, still like beer. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter. And all of the sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. So let me get this straight. I went out and bought a game called Call of Duty World War II of my own volition. I literally asked for a game set in the Eastern Front of World War II. I know that I'll either be placed on Allied Forces or the Axis Power, and I still choose to play this game. So I literally asked the guy at GameStop for this game, and I literally chose to play it. So right there off the bat, you're either lying or just putting words in other people's mouths who wholeheartedly disagree with you. And it's treated no differently than playing a British soldier. Wait, so you're telling me that in an online PvP with evenly matched teams, where the only goal is to dominate spots on the map or get more kills than the enemy team, that which team you're on doesn't make a difference? Oh my god, it's almost like, I don't know, you somewhat understand online PvPs. This is bad on so many levels. This video? <laughs> Tell me about it. No one should ever have a random chance of fighting for the Nazis. Except, I don't know, in a game set in World War II. Now, if this guy was only talking about the campaign, I might slightly agree with him, but he already explicitly stated that his problem is with the online PvP, not the story mode. And if you purchase a multiplayer set in the Eastern Front, I honestly don't know why you'd expect not to see Nazis. And we should never express that there's no meaningful difference between Nazis and Allied soldiers, or that they're functionally interchangeable. Except, I don't know, in an online multiplayer with evenly matched teams or which side you're on literally has no implication on the rest of the game? Oh, no? Oh, I guess that's exactly what he's talking about then. Then he's right. We shouldn't treat interchangeable teams in an online shooter as if they were interchangeable teams in an online shooter. Makes sense. And before anyone equivocates and says not all German soldiers in World War II were Nazis. What? Who, who, sa who says that? Who says that? I've literally never heard anyone say that until just now. You know, he goes on for another 10 seconds explaining his claim, but since I've never even heard that argument once, I'll give him this one. Hold on, let me, let me reword that. Anyone fighting Nazi Germany's army during World War II is a Nazi. I'm just curious as to the connection between real-life soldiers and a CGI image in a video game. In that multiplayer shooter, when it switched you to the German side, did it go out of its way to tell you that the person you're playing was pressed into service under threat of their life? Wait, so in an online shooter where I die multiple times, I'm supposed to be told the life story of my character before each life? If I keep dying, am I a different soldier each time? Or the same guy, because that wouldn't make any, any sense at all. Should the game give me a new life story of a real person each time my completely imaginary, completely computer-generated clump of pixels respawns into the game? I mean, what if I just want to play Call of Duty and I don't care which side I'm on because my goal is to win regardless? If that's the case, these games are fine. But apparently, there are people out there who will buy a World War II themed online shooter and actually get upset they weren't told that the fake soldier they're playing as was forcibly drafted? If you're that fragile, maybe an online shooter isn't the best idea for you. Oh, and on a similar note, let's please stop forcing people to play as terrorists as well. Why? Like, seriously, why? Is this a fear of normalizing terrorism? Or you don't want people to become actual terrorists? Either way, that's dumb. I've been playing shooters for a long time. I've yet to join the military. I'm playing on the US or our allied side half the time. And that's in every game. So is there really a fear that I'll become a Nazi when there are only a couple World War II games out there and I may only play one or two, despite the fact that in nearly every shooter, certainly every Call of Duty, that I'm a U.S. troop or an ally and have yet to join the U.S. military? Oh, and I suppose video games make you more violent too, huh?
Did you jackass? No one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. Dude, you make it sound like you're being forced to put on the uniform the same way that actual Nazi soldiers were. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a video game. And no one is forcing you to play any of these games. And I don't know. Couldn't you just keep dying on purpose if you get placed in a Nazi team? I mean, your teammates would be pissed at you. But it's not like this is a competitive online shooter. Just die. Or play hardcore in COD World War II so you can just team kill your side. Problem solved. And by making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it. We normalize them. Ah, there it is. It is normalizing them. Playing a World War II shooter where the only things that distinguish what side you're on is your outfit that you don't even see since it's a since the game's in first person and the announcer's accent. And that's how some and that's somehow going to make genociding Jews not seem as bad. <laughs> that's insane. That is an insane theory. Seriously, I played COD World War II a full year, and 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 just a few days ago, I made a video bashing the fash who, who beat up a journalist. So I still hate the fash just as much, despite playing as a literal Nazi. And I'm, so, I'm, yeah, I'm saying Nazi and fash and terrorist because, you know, apparently uh, YouTube Alphabet Corp wants to censor speech and doesn't want me to actually say Nazi or fash or a uh, tourist so i gotta say those things instead in order to keep me still popping up isn't that amazing <laughs> we make them just window dressing for entertainment they reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies oh so seeing a nazi so seeing nazi imagery so much lessens the impact of of seeing it but i suppose calling everyone you politically disagree with a nazi is fine and does nothing to lessen the impact of the term nazi Hmm, so playing a video game where you may be a Nazi, but it has no implications on real life, that's bad. Demanding Nazi Germany's economic policies while beating up gay Vietnamese journalists all in the name of bashing the fash, well, that's fine. Woo, what a hot take. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. Then what the hell are you wasting my time for? But for some people, it moves them from the territory of revolting to just edgy. I disagree. Antifa may only see themselves as edgy, but they are truly revolting. It makes scrawling a swastika on something change from unthinkable to just dangerous. And it makes common street markings into Nazi symbols. It means you might not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave. And if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. Yeah. Yeah, listen to the guy. Seeing Iron Crosses in a video game will make you more likely to listen to a Jewish dude in a yarmulke. It seems like such a small and simple thing. But it's things like this that erode our safeguards against dangers we sacrifice so much to fight. Like actual Nazis and calling everyone to the right of Bill Maher a Nazi? Yeah, I think you're aiming your anger at the wrong group here, buddy. Blame Antifa and the leftists for normalizing Nazis. Not video game players. By the time you've played a hundred hours of being a Nazi, their voice stabs become memes and in-jokes with your friends. That's literally never happened. And I've played COD World War II a full year. This dude is full of sh- By the thousandth time you've respawned as a terrorist, you're either celebrating them or making fun of them. Neither of which helps the global crisis we have that takes thousands of lives every year. Seriously? This dude for real would have been protesting the 1967 movie The Producers for making fun of Hitler and Nazis. And in today's day and age, what is the harm of making fun of Nazis? You think we'll, we'll instigate Germany to attack us again? <laughs> what an idiot! This dude for real should have been protesting Team America in 2004. Yeah, no more video games where you're a Nazi and no more movies making fun of Nazis. Didn't you know that's how the original Nazi party was formed? By people making fun of non-existent Nazis? It's right there in the history books. Playing as Nazis in, Call of du in a Call of Duty video game in 1939 turned all of those Germans into Nazis. <laughs> this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. Ugh. Don't make them morally equivalent. 
Don't make there be no in-game moral difference between your Nazis and your allies. Yeah, makes makes sense. This dude wants legislation to prohibit game developers from making an evenly balanced World War II online PvP. So if you end up on one of the two sides, it's it's unevenly matched. That's what I want in an evenly matched online PvP, for it to be unevenly matched. Sure. Frame PvP as a training exercise. Or let's make, make legislation making it to where game developers have to make PvPs with nerf guns. No real killing. It's just a training exercise. <laughs> yeah, if I wanted to train in counter-terrorism, I'd join a counter-terrorism force. I just want to play video games. Quit, quit being such a buzzkill, you loser. Or simply take one of your non-odious sides and recolor them so that it's red versus blue. So Halo. So basically this guy is saying Call of Duty should be should just be Halo. If I wanted to play red versus blue, I'd go play Halo. If I want to play Allies versus Axis, I'll go buy a World War II themed shooter. Or I could play as the blue allied forces versus the red allied forces. But being that Nazis used red a lot, I feel as though that's still insensitive. It should be blue versus green, so we offend even less people who opt in to purchase an M-rated game. Idiot. A good example of a game that does this is Rainbow Six Siege. Or Halo. Rainbow Six Siege isn't even red versus blue. Halo is literally red versus blue. If this dude knew anything about gaming, that would be the only apt choice to reference, but clearly this dude knows nothing about video games. He goes on to say how Call of Duty should just be Rainbow Six Siege instead, so I'm skipping that. If I wanted to play Rainbow Six Siege, I'd go buy Rainbow Six Siege, but I want to play Call of Duty, so I'm going to buy Call of Duty. Don't have players randomly spawn in as one or the other. Allow players to choose which side they're on. Allow players to... <laughs> Dude, I spend enough time as it is in pregame lobbies. You want to expand that time just so you don't have to play on one of two sides. If it's, th if it's such a huge deal to your fragile little self, whatever. But do you realize the more people that opt to only be allied, the more times people who don't do that will be placed on the Nazi side? Isn't that what you're against? So to protect someone who doesn't even play this game, you're going to subjugate some players to be Nazis more frequently? That's what you're against. You clearly did not think this through. Now, of course, this has all sorts of in-game problems, such as creating shorter wait times for fascists. <laughs> what a dick. So I realize it's a fictional game, and I don't care, and just want to play Call of Duty, and that makes me fash. <laughs> Dude, what a piece of sh- But you know what? Those wait times could be artificially extended. If it meant players had an active choice in what teams they would represent, you, 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 you. Really, I'm supposed to wait longer to get into a match because some Antifa member's fragile little psyche can't handle playing as a fictional clump of clump of pixels. Fuck you. You need your PvP to at least represent real historical events and be a realistic take on those battles. Holy shit, this is so dumb. Yeah, this. Yeah, let's make historically accurate single-player campaigns. Now let's add an evenly balanced multiplayer. Oh, no, wait, we can't because the PvP has to be 100% historically accurate as well. Man, it's a good thing this guy doesn't actually play video games. Uh, because if he did, and if he knew COD World War II at a zombie mode, this guy would lose his literal sh**. How dare a game with a single player set in World War II have zombies? So how will they know if it's not historically accurate? They'll never know. Oh, a crippled woman fighting on the front lines of World War II? Yes, Slay Queen, historical accuracy be damned. Once you make both sides balanced, it's also no longer historical. Oh my god. I play, I play Call of Duty for evenly matched multiplayer, and you want to take that away from me, uh, away from me because it's not 100% historically accurate. Oh no, I'm playing on a map of a major battle in an online game. It better be 100% accurate. Yeah, if I hop into a game of COD World War II, and I knew going into it that regardless of what I do, that that match would end the same way every single time to keep up with historical accuracies, then I wouldn't play the f***ing game. And it would flop. But hey, I guess a bunch, a bunch of developers and QA testers getting laid off due to a game failing is worth it so long as not just the story mode, but the random online PvP is 100% historically accurate. And once you let players get cool weapons that weren't actually at that particular battleground, it's also no longer historically accurate. Oh my god, who the hell cares?
And look, we're not saying we can't have games about World War II or about terrorism. Really? You're not saying that? Heh, <laughs> could have fooled me. It sounds as if, like, that's exactly what you've been saying the whole entire video. Games can do better. And in this particular case, it's not even that hard to do better. And it's no more costly to do better. You hear that called World War II? That's why you didn't do good. It wasn't mismanagement from Michael Condry. It wasn't an inability to listen to the player base and make the necessary changes. No, you failed called World War II because you had Nazis. I mean, sure, no one ever even brought this up until this asshat. But who are you going to listen to? A YouTuber speaking on behalf of the entire gaming community? Or 78,000 out of 88,000 people who disliked this video? And yeah, completely copying Rainbow Six or Halo wouldn't cost Call of Duty any money. I love how much certainty he says that with. Yeah, your video got ratioed straight to hell. Obviously, no one agrees with you. Minus all the blue check marks at Kotaku and IGN. We can take a big step forward for the industry. We can stop helping to normalize Nazis. Dude, you called me a fash because I don't mind playing a game right away if that means I have to play on the enemy's side in an online VV PvP. But yeah, I'm, I'm super duper cooper sure that you just don't want Nazis to be normalized. And that's all of this guy's horrendous video. I may need chemo after this because that was straight cancerous. This dude is really this upset that a historically accurate World War II shooter has a multiplayer that functions the same as every other shooter in that franchise. Randomized with every weapon in the game on maps from the story mode. Oh no, so terrible. This guy's next video might as well be why red and blue in online PvPs is unfair because his favorite color is blue and the game should ask for his consent before they place him on the red team. What a croc. What a beta. This guy wants to dictate what people see and hear and somehow he's against the Nazis? Dude would fit right in. Fash ideology like that? This dude is a fun sucker and wants to ruin video games. He probably would support legislation making this law. That is insane. That is asinine. That's leftist for you. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if this dude made you cringe. Drop a dislike if you want the government to dictate what we see and hear in video games. Uh, and uh, this video was titled, his video was titled Stop, Stop Normalizing Nazis by Extra Credits. So go ahead and search it. Drop it a dislike to make that horrendous ratio even worse. And also, before you leave to go do that, smash that sub button. Ba -ba -boom. Because if I reach 100 subs before the end of September, I'll be giving out five shirts. Maybe at least five shirts. So sub and share. Uh, so other sub, share, so other sub. Yeah, that's... That's going to wrap this one up. I've been your boy Rebel, joining the Nazi party and not the U.S. military because I've played a Call of Duty game. Makes sense. And until next time, peace.